it's by far the most commonest injury that everybody sees uh, in their clinic. And if you see these four x-rays, uh, these are the variety of fractures that we usually see. It could be as simple as the one on your left. It could be quite innocuous as the second one, but if you give a plaster to this, it could settle down. It could be something like the third one, which we might miss, an, an obvious complicated distal radius fracture. So how do we go about making a diagnosis? For that, we need to have good x-rays. 90, almost over 90% of the x-rays would, rather 90% of the injuries would require x-rays and nothing else. You need a good PA view, a good lateral view, and occasionally a scaphoid view if you're suspecting an additional scaphoid fracture. There's always a confusion why a PA and an AP. We use a PA view because it's easy to place an injured wrist palm down rather than palm facing up. And additionally, you can get a good profile of the ulna styloid if you get a good PA view and you will be able to pick up even innocuous ulna styloid fractures. So a good PA view would give you almost all the fractures. We might miss a bit of the shear fractures like the volar lip or the dorsal lip. You'll be able to pick up the distal radial joint injuries as well as uh, any dislocations of the radiocarpal joint or the midcarpal joint. A lateral view is typically taken with the wrist perpendicular or the hand perpendicular to the x-ray plate. It gives you a good position of the fractures, whether they're volar or dorsal. It gives a good position of the carpus, whether it is volar or dorsal to the long axis of the radius. It gives you the position of the DRUJ, like the one in the bottom screen, where there is a volar dislocation. And if you carefully look at it, you would get a good carpal alignment as well. Sometimes you have a good normal X-ray on the lateral, but you're suspecting something at the lip. So this is something that everybody does probably on table to see the intraarticular placement of the screws. You can also do it as a pre-op projection so that you could pick up the good teardrop. You can pick up a lot of volar lip fractures with this. You could pick up the widening of the distal end of the radius. And something that you would have planned to cast, you may end up fixing it. Everybody has seen these angles and these angles are quite because they tell us the intensity of the injury and what was the primary displacement of a fracture. You measure the radial inclination, the radial shortening or the radial height, and you measure the volar tilt. For me, in our practice, or in most of the papers, is the radial height that's quite the most significant, significant among the top three. A good PA view would give you an idea of the DRUJ of the ulnar styloid. A subtle hint in the bottom picture would be the a positive radio ulnar variance that can happen in a very innocuous distal radius fracture. You could also pick up good or very small styloid fractures as in the top picture. So why do we see these x-rays properly? Because we want to treat it right. You either want to fix them or you want to cast them. Then you kind of, you kind of describe them in different classifications. But what we have found is most of the classifications are either confusing or are not prognostic. For example, this is simple, simple classification like this, or a classification based on one particular segment of the distal radius. You could have based on the multiple segments of the distal radius. You can have it based on the mode of injury. And the, the favorite amongst all is the classical AO fracture classification, which it describes it in into extra-articular, partial-articular, and intra-articular. The problem with these is you may not be able to give a prognostic significance or decide what you want to do. So in a distal radius fracture, what we want to know is what is the stability of the distal radius injury? Now, if, if you know it's stable, you can get away with just simple non-operative management. And if you can predict that it's unstable, you can discuss operative management with the patient. So, for example, clinically, if it's a high velocity injury or an open injury. Rohan, this is Dr. Warrior. Yes. Uh, there seems to be a small technical problem. It's not yet streaming live. Oh. If we could just pause for a couple of minutes till Ashok yes. gets it online and gives us the signal that it's online or Neeraj gives us the signal because we're getting yes. Yes. 
Yes, yes. I, I was. I am just talking to Ashok. Rohan, just wait for two minutes. Right. Yeah, yeah. Start all over again. I think we. I don't mind you starting the presentation again. Because nobody has seen it. Ashok, I am just talking to Ashok. Wait. Yeah. I I was just checking it actually. So I was wondering whether there was any problem at my end. No, 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 no. I I just spoke to Ashok. He's traveling. That's why he has a signal issue. Okay. Ah, uh, Ashok. Ha. Huh. Okay, okay. We will wait. Wait. No, no problem. Ha. Huh. Wait for thirty second. He said. Would you let me know? Yes, yes, yes. I will just let you know. Wait. No, no, no worry, guys. I I will cut down two slides out of my hundred and twenty. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry. Mine is five minutes. <laughs> No, there's no point us continuing because no one's listening. By the way, <laughs> I, I, I was, in, in fact, when I played it again, played yesterday's videos, and then it went on to some other webinar. I I tried the same thing and I got a, I got two messages. Oh, yes, sir. Neeraj, Neeraj, is Neeraj here? It is live now. Ha. Okay. I think Rohan, you start it again. Yeah. Ah, hello, Atala. हाँ लाइव आता ही लाइव इस लाइव लाइव यस यू कैन स्टार्ट अगेन सॉरी फॉर द डिले ठीक है मतलब जितने की नहीं है ओके ओपन होता है कब आगे लगे ऑल राइट हाय गुड इवनिंग दिस इज रोहन एंड आई विल स्पीक टू यू ब्रीफली ऑन रेडियोलॉजिकल अप्रोच टू डिस्टल रेडियस फ्रैक्चर्स एंड व्हाट गोस इनटू The distal radius fracture is by far the commonest injury that everybody sees, and this is just a small spectrum that, amongst the variety of cases that we usually see in our clinic. As simple as the one on the left, as innocuous as the second one, a simple one that can be missed and have grave uh, complications later, and an obviously a complicated one on the right side. So whenever we see a distal radius fracture uh, or an injury to the wrist, the two commonest radiographs that we should all take would be the PA and the lateral view. And if you're suspecting a scaphoid injury, then go ahead and take a scaphoid view. There's always a confusion between whether to take a PA or an AP view. We always prefer a PA view because it's very easy to place an injured wrist with palm flat on the surface rather than the other way around. And it also gives you the ulna style out in profile so that you can pick up a majority of the injuries on the ulna side. A good PA view will give you almost 90% of the fractures or maybe more. A little ones on the volar lip or the dorsal lip could be missed, but you can pick it up if you carefully observe the lateral view. A lateral view is taken with the hand perpendicular to the plane of the plate. It gives you almost all the fractures it provides you with the position of the carpus in relation to the long axis of the radius this is quite important when you have lip fractures and you could see whether it is moved or shifted volarly or dorsally you can also pick up the diuj position like the one you can see on the bottom which is volarly subluxated or dislocated a tilted lateral view is commonly taken when you are operating or plating a distal radius to look at the screw placements whether it is intraarticular In fact, it can also be taken pre-op so as to study the volar lip. It gives you a very nice view of the anteroposterior width of the distal radius, and allows you to make a decision of whether to plate or cast uh, such a fracture of the volar lip. Everybody has seen these angles, and these are quite important so as we know how much. displacement is there primarily at the time of injury because that decides what goes into the management you can have the radial inclination the radial height and the volar tilt for me it's the radial height that's the most important amongst all the three the ulna side injury is also important so never miss it you can have an innocuous fracture of the ulna stadoid like the one on the top A, a small widening of the DRUJ, like the one on the bottom. This is quite significant if you if missed, and a subtle positive ulna variance in an innocuous radial uh, radius fracture, which can also lead to ulna impingement. So these are quite important, and that's why you need to study the DRUJ as well on a PA view. Classifications by far don't give a prognostic significance, and there are many of them in uh, for the distal radius. This one, which is the simplest, 
you could base it on one particular facet of the distal radius or you could base it on the multiple facet of the distal radius it could be based on the injury and the commonest one is the a01 which is kind which kind of gives you some prognostic significance or the severity of the injury if at all you want to follow something this would be a good one because this will standardize your fracture group amongst most of the studies that are done uh, overall but what we need to know except apart from the classification is whether your distal radius is stable or not for example if it's a high velocity injury or an open injury almost always these fractures are unstable so by unstable you mean we need to give some stability by fixing it shear fractures or comminuted fractures can also decrease the stability and that's what you need to see there are many predictors of instability in the distal radius fractures the three commonest or the most important ones are age which is more than 60 years of age comminution both volar or dorsal or even uh, comminution of the druj and the loss of radial height and when i say loss of radial height it's at the index or the primary x ray like i said a major druj injury like this will also cause a lot of instability and these fractures typically are not amenable to plaster fixation you need to fix them well so when you see an x ray of a wrist injury what you need to know you know you don't need to know any classification what you need to know is whether it's an extra articular or intra articular injury whether there is combination volar or dorsal or both what is the primary displacement and that's where your inclination tilt and radial height is important look at the quality of the bone and look at the druj this you know these if you answer these well you would know whether you want to fix it or whether you want to put a plaster uh, for me in my practice ct scan is this is not such a big part of managing a distal radius injury i would say 90 out of 100 fractures we don't do a ct a ct would be done if i'm suspecting a volar lip injury or a, a or a, or a shear fracture if i'm suspecting a diapunch fracture which these which will not be seen on the best possible x ray so in about 10% of my wrist injuries i would get a ct scan done it allows you to define the complex fracture patterns it also gives you an idea of how to press the articular an mri almost always is not needed i i might have done just one in the last seven years primary need for uh, to rule out a major ligament injury and that's what we were suspecting when there was a very bad carpal view so the take home message for this lecture would be you need to get good radiographs and good radiographs a good pa and a lateral view can give you almost 90% Uh, in in 90% of the uh, cases allow you to make a decision of whether you want to fix it or whether you want to cast it you need to know the mode of injury you need to know whether there is intra or extra articular component what would be the initial displacement look at the comminution both volar dorsal as well as on the ulnar side look at the bone quality and look at the status of the distal radial ulnar joint it also predicts whether uh, you will have a good result or not thank you so much mm-hmm.